to the Monday, October 7th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. Uh, our committee, uh, I'll let in the staff and members introduce themselves first of all. Hannah Smith. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Eric Gilbertson. Benjamin Chain. Our committee is advisory to the Development Review Board, so we will look at each of the applications and move them forward. Do I hear any other comments ahead of time, or do we do I hear approval of the agenda? Do I hear a motion? Second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. We'll move forward to actually to the uh, application for Five West Street. Jonathan Hertz. Um, actually, well, at the time we f we filled it out. You could come up here. They're not going to hear I'm, you. I'm but sorry. The microphone. sorry. Come on up. Go ahead it's, and come up not, to the table. Oh no. Okay. So we and got, yeah. that, changed, Sean. that changed last Tuesday. We closed. Yeah, at the time we filled out the application, the Hearses still owned the right. house, but we were anticipating closing on oh, okay. October first, and we did. Oh, good. Close on October first. So. Well done. I forget the, the amend the application. Well, congratulations. Well, Simplify it, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm just gonna make one comment. If you change who's talking, make sure the microphone's pointed at you. You can actually pull it forward some if you need to. And describe the application and the changes you want to make to the house and garage. <laughs> um, so it's it's twofold. One, the the uh, the roof is in rough shape. Probably should have been been replaced a couple years ago, particularly over the dormer. Uh, and so we want to to get new uh, new roof. Still still the asphalt architectural shingles. So. Same call. Same color? Yeah. Um, no, it's slightly different. It's a, uh, what's the color called? It's a gray. It's on there. Oh, it was gray asphalt. Yeah. Um, the name is on there. Yeah, it's estate, estate gray. gray. Estate gray. Estate gray. Yeah. Thank you. We were going to, we were going to go with gray because we're also, um, you know, considering or wondering about changing is the cedar shakes have to be some of them have to be replaced and restained mm -hmm. as well as um, more immediate is the um, the trim particularly around the windows it's chipping so we're worried about getting that painted soon um, so we were wondering about white trim um, some sort of gray instead of the brown and black shutters and a black door um, yeah. So I have the actual paint chips that yeah. they provided as some color options, and I, my understanding is you wanted some feedback from the design review committee on maybe some choices. Was that right? Or I this mean, is I just your had an opportunity realm. to know what particularly like a 1910 home. I want to keep with what would be fitting, but the brown is very dark. Mm -hmm. um, the yellow with it doesn't look very good. <laughs> Um, anymore and so it's freshening it up so that's why we picked the, that particular color roof so you're proposing to change all the yellow trim to white trim is that what I'm mm -hmm. hearing yes. you say mm -hmm. yeah and then the shutters you want to keep but make them black <clears throat> if, we, if we were to change the siding to a different color to like a, a light gray or a, something that looks New England color gray, then I would change the, sh the shutters to black. Um, if we had to keep it brown for whatever reason, historically that's the color it's always been, or I don't know, I don't know what color shutters would go with brown. <laughs> Maybe keep them green then. It's so the biggest thing to start with is what color do you want the, the shakes to be, the shingles on the house? Do you want to leave them brown or do you want to paint them like a, a dark gray or, or like a dark slate gray or? Go with the shingles. Like you tell them what you want. What I, what yeah. I think would look, what if I would you, think if you that take would a look raw, nice. If you take a raw shingle and put it on a house and leave it exposed to the weather, <laughs> the side facing the sun will turn brown. The other sides, the north side in particular, with rain on it and moisture and not much sun, will turn dark gray. Okay. So, it if might you, take you a year or two. It, it'll take a while. <laughs> but if you look at the, if you look at Cape Cod houses on the Cape, most of them are gray right. because salt water in the air. They're near water, so you get more of that gray color than a brown. 
But again, anything facing the sun will turn brown, just the patina from from the weathering. So your pick, whether you want to go with a, a dark gray. I wouldn't go with a light gray is OK, but it tends to stain easier. You'll see oh. stains on it. So that's what I color. really need help with, because basically I just ran over and grabbed some. And I think testing a few is important. But I was thinking of a light gray. There is another home. Um, on the green that did a dark gray. Um, so we're open. So some sort of gray, we would I mean, a, really a light prefer. gray's fine, just understand your maintenance is gonna be much higher. Okay, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many times over 20 years do you wanna paint that house? <laughs> so, so dark gray. Again, that's, <laughs> so how that's dark? That's your call. <laughs> this dark or it needs to be darker? For, for, the, for the dirt. For the body color, the darker the better. Okay. For for several reasons. Mm -hmm. If you if you look look at the houses just up and down the main streets in town, mm -hmm. and that's not a main street, but if you look at houses on the street, anything that's a lighter color, watch it over a few years. You either have to hose it off or repaint it because it tends to pick up dirt. A medium to a darker color won't show show that as much. Okay. <coughs> And then black for the shutters. And if you, do, if you do like a dark, uh, a gray, a darker gray, medium to a darker gray color, you could do black for the shutters. Yeah, some of the some of the green shutters are so dark they're almost black. Yes, that's true. Um, There's actually a that's color. Sharon Williams has one that we like for lattice work. Dark, we like dark around the base, and it's called green black, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful uh, green color, but it's really really dark. And it hides dirt really well, especially splashback on a lattice right. against the ground. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a color that paint has uh, shutter green, which is a very dark uh, green. It's traditional in New England. So. Great. so a color, again, a color like that, um, again, when you look at this color, I mean, it's, it may be dark brown, but in that shows very dark there. Yes. But the advantage of it is lower maintenance and it hides just natural dirt that accumulates and houses have to be, you know, washed off occasionally and the, the lighter colors just show it quicker. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So darker gray. That's what I would like if that is fitting with that style house and what would look I mean, I want it to look nice, of course. <laughs> I think these are probably pretty close to the original colors. If you've done any scraping on it, probably not since you just own the house for some hours. <laughs> right. Yeah, we, we have a, the, uh, I know the, the, the trim is, you know, beyond Same. chipping and scraping. It's, yeah, you can, you can see the wood in, in a lot of places, and I don't see any other color um, Underneath. besides Underneath. the yellow. These are probably the original colors yeah. for Brown and yellow is, uh, uh, you know, kind of combination that you mm -hmm. see. Uh, well, well, brown is actually a yellow-based color, so you have <coughs> color groups: blue-based, yellow-based, and the yellow is is fairly traditional with dark brown. But you can do if you do a gray, you can do a cream color but you don't want yellow and the cream color because it clashes with the gray, but you can get a different base with the gray. And a good you know, good paint store can give you some ideas about that. There are actually some of the paint stores, you know, any of them around here, uh, have traditional color combinations okay. that will show you, if you pick a dark gray, what colors go for trim, shutters, and everything else. Okay. So you you know you can do dark brown or dark gray. Again, they're both traditional colors. I mean, you can do a lighter gray. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we. Yeah. I, I would, if yeah, you're going to go with white, I'd go with an off white. It's a little more a creamy color. Okay. So we say with like the cream. Uh, just, just there's a lot of white paint. Those uh, columns are pretty, pretty stark contrast, right. which you may not. Right, okay. And uh, 
All the eaves and rakes are pretty good size on this building too. So. Yes. And you're talking about paint, not stain. The different painters have been talking to me about that, that sometimes there's like a new paint that might last longer. I'm confused. I thought it was stain. But they have like, because one of them talked about priming first, and so I was confused. How would you prime if you're staining? Right. So I'm not really sure what would be recommended, like what, whatever's going to last longest. Probably the longest line lasting uh, is uh, an opaque stain. So it doesn't have any of the pigment or feller in it, so it doesn't peel. Okay. So right, I don't know how you try to put that over brown. But you're not yeah, going to put that over brown. Actually, you can use a. Um, you can look it up under consumer reports or any of the recommendations. But there's actually uh, a company called Bear makes a solid color stain. And it's a deck and siding stain, and on a siding, it's supposed to last for. 25 years, and it's a really good quality product. And again, any of the paint stores that usually have a good quality as well. The, you can the check and see the BEHR there? BEHR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's carried at Home Depot yeah. exclusively. Yeah. But you can also check with Sherwin Williams or mm -hmm. Albuchans carries Benjamin Moore, and they have some good quality stains too. But you may want to check on the consumer reports website because they've tested all the stains, solid color stains, as far as how long they last and for the least amount of maintenance. Mm -hmm. And they have the dark colors as well. You, you and you can it. spray it on or brush it on or whatever. And then as far as the trim, you probably would want to go with a paint. Mm -hmm. But when you, when, you, on the when you paint trim, particularly in areas where there is chipping or peeling, if there's moisture, that's an issue. There is a urethane-based primer that you would want to put on. It's not cheap, but it solves your problems. Mm -hmm. Our experience has been that instead of repainting every three years, I've got 12 years right now on paint that's been put over that primer. And there's they're different brand names, but there's one that we use in the past with good luck. And again, there are others. It's a funny name. It's called Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a urethane-based primer, and that works really, again, around kitchens and bathrooms on exteriors where there's moisture that comes through that tends to occur along your trim near roof lines yep. where it tends to peel a lot. Right. That stuff works great. Okay. great. Yeah, it, it, uh Sometimes paint doesn't stick real well to new cedar. There's so much oil in the cedar that you probably need some kind of a treatment. I wouldn't know what it was. But a lot of people just let cedar. Actually, the bare solid stain works really well on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. New it's, as well as older. It's just uh, there's so much oil in cedar that paint tends not to stick until it's wetted for a while. But you're choosing to, you want to do a new roof and you're trying to decide the color of the shingle of the roof with projected ideas of what you want to do on the <coughs> exterior. Yeah, because we can go with the brown roof. We, I don't know if it's already, we've already paid for the roof before yeah. we've been closed. <laughs> right. Yeah, and it all, yeah, it all needs it. I mean, the roof, the, is, the roof is in the roughest shape, but the, the trim is completely peeled off in a lot of places down to the wood, so that's the second most important. And then the shingles, there's a lot that are you know, curled and broken too, but doesn't seem quite as high priority as the roof and the, the trim, but clearly they all they all need it, so sure. we figured mm -hmm. since they all Are you hoping need it, to try and do the exterior color this season? Um, no, I think for the the shakes we're thinking next next season. Yes. Yeah. And even the trim ideally would be this season, but knowing you know, labor when you can get people in well, and it's already we didn't cold notice out. It seems like a until we were in the house, just looking out the windows, like, oh my gosh, you yeah. know, I hope we don't get rot this winter. I doubt you'd get rot. Well, you don't have as much problem with rot. Well, I mean, there's no paint on uh, parts of it, it's just wood. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. It'll last over the winter, though, because stuff doesn't rot much in the winter, but it's frozen. Uh -huh. Oh. Okay. 
Is your season. intention to do the roof this winter or right yeah, off? This fall, yeah, right this off the month. winter. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the, the roof, yeah. Good strategy. Start at the top, work your way down. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and when they put the new roof on, make sure they put a good drip edge on it. That'll keep the yeah, water keep away, away from yeah. the trim. Yeah, and gutters, too, we were um, looking at our, the inspector said to look at gutters. I guess I think it has gutters on the has gutters on the back, but I think we haven't thought all the way through. But gutters or diverters, just remember that when water comes off the roof in the winter and then refreezes, your gutter fills with ice. Yeah. So got we'll look at that from you've got both, enough both trees ways. around there that the gutters will fill with leaves as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They make actually a, it's not a gutter, but it's a diverter that mounts on your trim in a problem area. And when water comes off it, what it does is it, it's, it's like a, uh, a several veins and when the water comes off it kicks it uh, out away from the house okay. instead of letting it come straight down. Oh, okay. Shoots it off like But it doesn't angle. fill with ice or leaves. Yeah. That's <laughs> good. There are a lot of things to consider. I, yeah. You know, gutters can work well in certain locations, but there yeah. is maintenance involved right. as well. So, just so you know, this is all recorded, so you can go to the city website and oh, re listen to it if you miss anything, and I'm taking notes too. So, <laughs> are you choosing the architectural shingle just because that you're replacing what was there, or because that's a look you're interested in? I think first we were trying to look for a shingle that would last you know, last a long time. I think the last shingles there only, I think they just did it in 04, so it really hasn't been that long, but they were IKO shingles, which I guess have had, had a lot of problems. So we were looking at um, architectural One of the best roofers shingles. in Burlington only uses certainteed. Uh, yeah, we'd heard we'd heard good things that they have a lifetime shingle that for, yeah. technically will last a hundred years. It's this thing, though. The thing about it is, every shingle just takes four nails. Right. So if you put a ten dollar shingle up or a forty dollar shingle up, that you know, it takes the same amount of labor to install it. Right. Yep. Exactly. So if the product lasts longer, actually the product. A uh, certain teed makes one called a premium shingle that has a, it's like a minimum 50 year warranty and it's not much more than anything else. It's $90 a square. Right. Okay. Hmm. And yeah, they come in great color yeah. choices. And yeah, we had looked at, we had looked at the certain teed and some and then ended up looking at um, the Owens, the Owens Corning um, architectural shingles. It was just a little, I was finding that Finding that balance, a few of the things we read said they were close, but then we, yeah, but they were they were more affordable. But then we mm -hmm. saw elsewhere that the certainty probably was. That's the was only good. one that there's the uh, there's a roof up in Burlington who's actually done City Hall and a lot of the big buildings yeah. in Burlington, and when they do shingles on the old historic houses up there, that's the only shingle he'll use is certainty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He says, I don't like callbacks, so. Yeah. <laughs> More of my question is aesthetically, like versus a three tab shingle versus an architectural shingle, what you're, were you making the choice for the architectural based on you were excited about it or based on that you were trying to, does this have an architectural shingle on it? They look different, they're yeah. radically different in appearance. Those yeah. Are. No, the no, architectural the, the, from versus from the three tab. tab. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it was the decision was really more from where we read. It sounded like, in general, the architectural were more durable and would last longer than the three than three tab. So that was the main. Actually, main if you look at the shingles around this <coughs> in this picture here, it is an architectural. Yeah, that looks like yeah. an architectural shingle to me. Yeah. And that's why I thought you were trying to be consistent. Well, they used to have problems with architectural signals because it channeled water because of the high profile oh. and it would erode in between the shingles, but I think you've got that figured out. Okay. The so other thing you want to do is don't let anybody uh, lowball an estimate without putting uh, 
place a, a water and ice shield over the yeah. entire roof. Some people do it a little bit around the perimeter, but you, in a house like this with all the penetrations that you have, make sure that they coat it with a total water and ice shield on it before they put the shingles on. Your insurance company will love you for doing it too. <laughs> I appreciate the aesthetic aspect of things, and so, I mean, maybe we should consider that the shingles be... I think a three-tap looks nicer. I think, that, I think that architectural is something that has come along in more modern days and kind of, it's nice for the roofer because they don't have to think as much. Like, it just kind of like blends and sort of looks like kind of a, a little bit of a mess versus having all straight, really nice lines that like a three-tap, which is what I would imagine was probably on here originally, um, but it is more more work, and I haven't studied the middle. Probably wood shingles begin. Yeah. When, you know when the house was built? They say about 1910. 1910. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they might have used a wood shingle back then, the late 1800s, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's what the more architectural, architectural shingle, shingle yeah. matches, replicates yeah. is the original shake shake roofs. Yeah. Something to think about. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Although it sounded like you said you'd already ordered the shingles. I don't been handling the shingles. <laughs> yeah, we we did, although we need to follow that back up. I have heard for <laughs> not exactly the, put in the call today to find out where the <laughs> where the process is. But okay. it's a beautiful house. Yeah. Any exterior changes on the garage? Driveway. Uh, yeah, well, not. The, there's a new driveway. Yeah. There's going to be a new driveway, not next to the garage, but over and in front of the house. Can we talk about that, or is that a DRB? You, you can. It's mostly a DRB item. They're not going to be putting in any landscaping or anything, really. Um, but they're taking some out. I would, like, sure I would like some advice here. on aesthetics on that because it's tricky. Um, there's a stone wall on First Avenue, like a beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, you might be familiar with it. It really yeah. is yeah. striking. You can see it a little bit. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then Sean went over with from Public Works uh -huh. with, with Zach. With Zach, and they found a spot, which is the proposed spot. But then, and I didn't want to interfere with Carolyn's garden, but. I think it's just asparagus and raspberries which have overgrown that we could move and the driveway could potentially go on the right side of the property line which might look better. We don't have a better photograph. Uh, no, we, 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 it came out really dark on here. Um, so wait, I'm a little confused. So you're saying you might actually be able to move the driveway to the other side away from the corner? I was worried about it being in, the, in her garden. Uh -huh. um, and I talked to Audra, and she said to bring it up at the meeting because it's too late to yeah. send. Um, so instead of over on the left by the corner, yeah. so it's sort of like the driveway is more like just to the left of the front walkway to the front door, that it might look better. Right it's not there? as convenient to us, right but it might look better line. on this Hinchin's property line, like yeah. over on the right side. Okay, and Audra said and it was zero foot offside. I had assumed it was probably. Offset. I don't know. So there's well, kind the, the of what's in there thing, and the, what's kind of The funny of thing is, if you move it there, you don't have to go to DRB. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we were trying to get you to go over there before. Um, Sorry. No, that's okay. No, and, and is that like? Um, I was just worried about her garden. Is that like a bad neighborly um, thing to do too? By the even though there's technically zero foot offset. Um. Or so I'm trying. Uh, the other. So you had Zach. Wanted here instead of on First Avenue. Right. Yep. Did I can't even remember what the foliage is like there at the boundary line. Is it a lot of bushes and shrubs there? Because then you have Which issues with sightlines. On sight West, West Street. On oh. West Street, on where you're talking about no, moving it closer the, to the property um, line. No, there's raspberry bushes there. Raspberry now. bushes we, and asparagus that are like plentiful that could be and divided and moved. And on their property, uh, on the neighbor's no. property. No, they have a few mm -hmm. kind of low flower okay. beds, but it's mostly all grass on there. Huh. The and then I was thinking the driveway wouldn't even, it, it could maybe end, it doesn't have to go to the side of the house. I don't know, it could just do, 
It was just, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I it just has to be eight and a half go. feet wide by, what yeah. is it? I can yeah. sort yeah. of, yeah. are we still talking about the one that's sort of drawn on? Yeah. Uh, but Moving that over to the other side of the house. Moving Next it. Next to the property line. With right. the, over yep. to here. Right, exactly. Yeah, but still on West Avenue. Uh-huh. And this is, the reasons not to put it over here were protecting somebody's garden. Well, well, our garden now. <laughs> now that it's closed. <laughs> well, one of the reasons that they we noticed how beautiful the garden was, and Sean particularly looked at the work, like the way she designed it, and we didn't want to destroy it because yeah, we, they were really touch and wanted us to have it because we noticed that garden. Right. And so and it didn't like feel right to yeah. me to do anything to destroy that garden that she made. Yeah. But. Um, a gardener friend of mine and looked at it and it, the garden would still be fine it's just some asparagus and raspberries on sure. the side yeah. so I think and you know it might look better to put it over there than kind of going more in the front of the house having a car in the yard mm -hmm. it's a beautiful house from the street and I think it would be nice to I sort want of to destroy yeah, that yeah. minimize the car yeah. the vehicle impact versus putting on the, it right on the yeah. car so yeah I'd love your opinion on where these the best place for the driveway is aesthetically. Yeah. And in the picture, you can sort of see the light, the light gray on the picture, the circle and the lines oh, coming yeah, out. That's the stonework up. right right there. That, that's like the stone yeah, you could probably call path that in the garden. So we didn't want to mess that up. But as you can see closer to the um, property line, it's just all dark. And that's where it's just like raspberry bushes and asparagus. So we thought we could put the driveway there and, and that would be just, your driveway that you use yes and then and then the renter would park would at the, down here the on first avenue but, uh, right because yeah, their apartment would be above be above the garage so be okay. the garage so this is important this, this is, is something that you're this using this is my staff yeah. report yes yeah so that has the actual google view um street view on it and there's i think there were some other pictures in there as well i just i have a spare um that's what's going to the drb i'm gonna look at my other one to make sure we might, you might be able to amend your application right at the beginning of the DRB hearing. Do you oh. know how to do the Google map? Uh, or do you I think in this, at the moment, it's proposed to go on the lawn. Yep. And now we're talking about putting it over here in this garden. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have that aerial view, but I'm welcome to figure out how to do that. I didn't want to mess with somebody else's phone, so I'm just going to pull out of my mind. Um, go down West Street. Back it up. <laughs> We're all pulling it up on our phone. On the map, it has it says 12 feet by 20 feet or 30 feet. I don't I can't tell. Um, it was going to be 12 feet by 30. I think it was 30 feet deep. Okay, right. but then you said that it might not need to be that wide. Uh, it needs to be that wide. It needs to be a minimum of 12 feet wide. Oh, okay. It doesn't necessarily have to be 30 feet deep. Um, mm -hmm. Every parking space needs to be at least um, 18 and a half feet deep. So that's from the property line in. So, you know, that 30 feet measurement is from the road, so that's over the sidewalk okay. and however far the... Okay. Um, Meredith, I also heard that not less than eight and a half. Audra looked it up for Wait, me. that's how wide, a, that's how wide <coughs> a parking space needs to be. The curb cut needs to be a minimum of 12 oh, feet wide. Okay. Because there's different things coming into play. There's the curb cut width which is a whole separate state standard that the Department of Public Works applies okay. um, when they give you your access permit. And then there's your parking space limitations and how those all play in together for a residential um, driveway. Okay. So the curb and, cut could be 12 feet and then, and then it could narrow, narrow to eight. Yep. Okay. It would be a safer location to being further away from the intersection of first and west. Yep. Are you... Uh, one car, two cars, three cars? How many cars are going to live in this driveway? Um, we have one and a half. Right? <laughs> we, we, have a, we have a, a Nissan Leaf and a, and a, and a Subaru. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to need to charge it sometimes in the garage. No, well, we well, could we put up the... 
Yeah, I mean, we could put the charger potentially off the side of that. Hmm. Yeah, for some reason I can't get an aerial view from Google Maps on my phone either. But, give me a second. Okay, where did this copy of the staff report go that had the color pictures? That's right there. Okay. So going to be a different aerial shot. Uh, it's not, it didn't come out very well. Yeah, no, I've got the street view. I was just trying to get the aerial, but it doesn't come out very well. So, yeah, your any of your thoughts on if it'd be better to move the driveway or just no, no objections to moving the driveway location would be you it feels better while I have sensitivities and appreciation for people's gardens I do feel like it makes sense to move that uh, parking spot to the other side of the house yeah yeah and I don't I, we should talk after this but if you do want to move it over there um, that I mean that's going to be more than that's going to be well more than feet. 10 feet, and where the current location is more than 100 feet from your next closest intersection, moving it to the other side, we can probably at the beginning of your part of the DRB meeting to say we're amending our application okay. to no longer need DRB review, and they might be able to just finish it and send it back to me. Okay. Well, the other question I had was waiving the need for a driveway because there's public transportation. I forgot um, to bring that up too. That's a that's a because there's a bus stop up there. Yeah. At the college. You didn't place. ask that before, so I didn't go through that oh, whole analysis. Sorry. <laughs> okay. You could try and get that from the DOB. It would be a verbal am amendment to your application at the beginning of the hearing. So we can talk about that because I think it's pretty challenging in the winter. So it might be a good idea. I mean, to have a driveway because you're talking about. I've heard that also having your accessory dwelling unit. Mm -hmm. And them needing a parking well, space. Well, and when there's a parking ban, I don't think there's anywhere for us to park. Mm -mm. I would, I oh. would try and put in the driveway. Okay. Personally, right. having lived in Montpelier, yeah. yeah, it's nice to be able to get off the street when there's a heavy snow. Yeah. Okay. Now the garage is behind the house down here. Yep. Right. Yeah. Is there any accessibility from this side to put the driveway in in here? Um. That would put you. To the closest <laughs> side of the house and not have to bother with the front. Yeah, on, on first there's the stone, the stone, there's the stone wall um, and some trees that were, were problematic. And then talking to um, to Zach to he, he said it strongly prefer being up on West Street because when you're coming up first you hit a stop sign, so there's not really much risk. You're not hitting that curve uh, turn hard to. Um, hit somebody pulling out, whereas turning from west onto first, you're both going downhill and you don't have to stop in that direction. So, um, it's much more that was, dangerous. That was his preference for. Uh, oh, it's pretty steep west. there, too. It is yeah. steep, yes. I turned from. Well, because it gets icy and then on first. The way that people will own the house before you, they would park in the garage, then come up through and then enter. The back side of the house is that, or how do they navigate parking? Well, I noticed when we were, I noticed that sometimes I, I think maybe they had a car in the garage and the second car they parked because it was a leaf. They had a leaf too. They parked diagonal in the driveway because yeah. it could fit that way. Or they, um, we were told by the realtor that they would park at neighbors' driveways and have to walk back to the house in the winter because yeah I think they had the garage used as a workshop so yeah, I think they I think they used metal shop of sorts yeah. yeah so I think they parked the leaf in the driveway there in front of the garage and then parked their van I think was the other car they we parked the van thing. down at a neighbor's down um, maybe down first street and, and then would space. walk and then would and walk they would up. come in the front door either the front door or there are there are um, stone steps that come up off of um, first. first street into the side door, side door. Of the house. Do you have that on the um, They're about halfway, probably, about halfway between the garage and the corner of 
of first and west. The stone walls here and they continue mm -hmm. up yeah. this side. No new windows or doors or anything in the garage. Um, no, I think our the only question there what we'll be meeting with Chris with Chris Lumbra um, just about you know what you know to make sure that it's proper for egress and and that that sort of thing. So um, I mean, if if we were told to change it, we we would, but we don't have any plans of our own own volition. Garage door and everything. The garage, the garage door will remain. Yes. There's an entrance. There's an entrance to the apartment from the backyard. Okay. On that level, and then there's stairs that go down into the garage. Um, and then he also said the window needs to be big enough. So I don't know how which way the window opens. Um, that's the only thing that I guess we really have to make sure that um, the egress is safe in the. Because, but I wouldn't really want. I wouldn't want to change those windows. So I don't know what we can do. The windows you're talking about are the ones on the side of the garage, or which one do you see? Well, and if, if for some reason Chris says you need to change one of the windows on the garage, you can come back. Okay. Come back with come back with the plan. Yeah. That he says this is the window. He says yeah. it would work. And yeah. And I mean that's the that. actual renovations for the apartment. Were you thinking about doing those this fall, or that was going to be next? No, spring? probably in the probably in the spring. I yeah. think realistically by the time we get it together. Um, yeah. So you can have time to work out that final design. And then right. Yeah. Come back exactly. if you need to. Yeah. One of the things that is beautiful about the house is the way that it sits from the street. And that if there was a way to, in thinking about the driveway and the car and just how to minimize that as much as yeah. possible, I, I appreciate the, the side or the front. Uh, well, it would be sweet if you could still park down on first, but that feels like that doesn't feel reasonable to ask. Um, and so in moving the driveway up to the west street, if, you know, tucking it to the side as much as possible yeah. and making it feel... To be away from, away from the center of away from the, the house center as of the much house as possible. As much as possible. Whichever side you put it on, I think it, it, it would be fine. I mean, you can work with some landscaping to screen it so that it's, you know, it, you're just not an open yard with two cars parked in it, but right. you can screen it with some plantings or... Yeah. And I think there's ways to even put, so it looks like it's gray stones or something, like in the concrete you can put, so it doesn't look like, like a black... Yeah, black. Yes. Yeah, yeah I don't want it to... A concrete. Well, I don't know how... So it looks like it's almost like a cobblestone look or something. You can get the, also... the color of the stone. Yeah. Depends on They're your actually... appetite for shoveling and plowing, but getting uh, concrete pavers that are sort of allow for plants to grow through them. Mm -hmm. Like it's sort of like you can place them as a, a driveway material and you can drive on them, but grass the kind Vermont of does Natural grow Resources through. Council has shown on the corner of uh, Bailey and, and Baldwin. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, yep. Baldwin. 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 Yeah, Baldwin yep. Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Depending on what you have underneath those, those actually would count as permeable, and so they wouldn't add to your impervious surface on the property. Okay. Because water can infiltrate through. Right. It's not going to create additional stormwater runoff. Right. So that's actually a nice idea. Great. They actually make a masonry, it's like an egg crate panel, yeah. which you excavate mm -hmm. and you set these in and level them and then fill them back in with dirt and then you plant them with a low growing grass and you just drive on them. And you can mow over it, you can, but it gives you a, a surface that's not gonna turn to mud <laughs> in right. the off season. Right. Yeah, something. <laughs> And again, it looks like 
pretty much like your lawn yeah. most of the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Good. Health, I promise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've I've got some legal pad paper here if you need more for more notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A little more space. For that. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody want to? make any statements about any of the proposals or options? Seems like you're trying to do a nice job and do treat the house with sensitivity. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I have questions if you can be resources outside of this meeting um, for asking about driveway again. And um, I think Sean has taken pretty good notes. But the other thing is, if you know people in the community that can tell more about the history of the house. No? <laughs> he can tell you who to talk to, though. That's what I mean, yeah. I would check the National Register nomination out there as a national. I can't remember, is this in the district? He's also a good resource right. over there. Yeah. We know, Tim. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to even remember if this is, I think I... I think it is. Um, I think I looked. I don't think it's on the historic register. I don't think no, it's listed as a contributing factor. <coughs> no, nope. it's not. So I don't know where else I would go for the history of the house. I've always liked the house, but I don't know anything particular about it. Maybe, maybe check into the like the real estate transactions. You know, we have the, it back to the '60s. Yeah. Um, the vice president of the university lived there, I think. The the, the other uh, you can find out information if you go to the city directories. Uh, the Calicover Library has those, and it's listed by address and then with owners mm -hmm. and everything. They stopped doing those. 20 years ago, mm -hmm. but if you go back, I know I've done that with our houses, trace the owners because you can just go through and look at that address and you trace who the owners might be. I mean, depending on who the owners come up with, you might be able to find somebody who you know, can connect it to some other historic situation and find something else that way, possibly. And then to be clear as far as getting the roof and the colors, can, are we okay to go with a dark well, gray? Or we're gonna, take you, they're going to give you some options in okay. and here in the recommendation for it. I just okay. said that paint colors may either be a dark brown or a gray color okay. with okay. compatible off-white trim colors and darker gray or black shutter colors, again, compatible with the main body color of the house. So you have options. And again, you can explore those options with you know some of the paint stores. Great. They have they really they have some really nice uh, color charts yeah. that show historic colors and combinations thereof. Okay. And Great. If, for instance, if you pick a, if you open one of those up and there's a myriad of colors, you can pick a dark gray color for the house, and then it'll give you compatible trim colors and shutter colors and, and accent colors. Nice. Okay. Great. So this, that be our next step. We'll take this. We'll go to the paint store, and then when we settle on the ones that fit within that, should we email? Meredith and uh, say this is what we went with. You don't, you don't need to tell me what you went with. Have we just, to, just we just did. And if you have a couple of choices, that like if you say, well, I like this one, but maybe I like darker, uh -huh. uh, get a sample color of each and just start smearing some on and see okay. which one you like better. Okay. Because sometimes you get the actual color on the house, and one will have a really nice depth to it, and the other one will be, yeah, I don't like that right. as much. Right. Okay. So with the, with the samples, you just don't get the kind of texture behind it right yeah. uh, well that and yeah. you have you know there's diff the different sides of your house too it might look different because you have yeah. some parts of your house that are much more in the shade and some that are much more in the sun right. it might not be a bad idea to take enough to do a swatch of a color on one side and then pick another side of the house and just right. check it right there. that makes sense and you can watch it over the winter and think about it <laughs> right. yeah, that's a good idea. Right. <laughs> see how it looks in the snow and the, in the mud. And the <laughs> that's not a bad idea. We've learned that the community refers to it as the amazing brown house. Oh. Because people would say, where are you moving? And they're like, oh, oh, you mean the amazing brown house. 
So I'm like, I don't know why people are going to think of it not being brown. <laughs> It'll be the amazing house on the corner. Yeah. You think it's an attractive color, though. But no matter what you yeah. do, some people are going to find that it wasn't right. <laughs> There are actually some colors that you'd be surprising how close they look. It's between a brown and a gray, and sometimes, depending on the light, it's hard to tell which it is. Mm -hmm. And that might be fun to try to find something in between. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> everyone can, you everyone can have a beat, everybody. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> everyone will see what they want in it, right? <laughs> We're not helping you much with the color right. choice, are we? No, but it's very, very I helpful. I like, I just. Yeah. But it's your I, house, so yeah, you know, you pick yeah, the one I, that you like the most. But I think, I mean, I don't really, I didn't know about it, the design review committee before, but I figure you do this all the time and you know it would look good in the certain neighborhoods. And so I just kind of wanted to hear that you thought that that was a good color. <laughs> as, a, as a preservation person, I've been doing historic preservation for a long time. Uh, I would say do some paint scrapings, look at it, and that's the original color. I would certainly tend towards just leaving those colors. You would, okay. But uh, or you could go a shade darker. Maybe again, it's hard to tell. What was the original color of the house? If yeah, those paint. shingles have been up there for 50 years, they're darker they're, now just from aging. Right. So, or they might be lighter from aging. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Vermont. <laughs> but you also don't want to live in a house where you don't like what color it is. Yes. I mean, I don't think that I, I don't mind the brown. I just wanted to brighten it up. It was actually a painter's suggestion that got me to think differently about the house. So, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, we gotta go through the criteria still. Okay. And get you your recommendation yes, form. There's the criteria, and again, we made the comment that paint colors may either be the dark brown or gray with compatible off-white trim colors, and again, darker gray or black shutters that, that again, were compatible with the body color of the house. But in the, the criteria, number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility proposed landscaping, no changes proposed with this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change in lighting anywhere in relation to parking or anything else on the house. Like light fixtures? Yeah. Yeah. It, no, no plants? No? Okay. Not the lights, are, the lights are burned out as long as putting in a, putting in a light bulb inside the fixtures works. Then <laughs> okay. Don't want to do any more than that. <laughs> Rec recognition of and respect for view corridors and sing significant vistas, including gateway views of the seating and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. The other thing you might look at is there's a number of different like pattern books that architects work from or people actually built from. And this is a you know, really typical shingle style, sort of a colonial revival shingle style house. And you might just kind of check on the internet and see. I've been looking. I can't think of who might have uh, any of those pattern books around. Uh, but it just, it'll just give you some ideas about are the pattern books the one that have like the design of what the whole outside of the house would look like in this floor plan? Yeah, yeah. Lower yeah, I've seen those and name. they're for sale on Yeah, there's, there's eBay. Also yeah. Enough uh, just above just, just above my name, but both of us. If you got uh, sure. Either, if, if you, you want, want to. House, I mean, I, I, my guess is that's a good date. Uh, mm -hmm. But they suggest paint colors. There's a whole book out on paint colors. For different style houses too. So right? just yeah, just saying that. I know, no. It does. I don't just know, beside it really his, beside his name is yeah. fine. Awesome. So what will happen is this will go back to. Let me see. It's. To, no, go ahead. Okay. Uh, we need to talk after this because okay. we got to see what we're going to do for DRB if you want to change where the driveway goes okay. or not. All right. 
So that meeting starts at 7. Okay. Um, but either way, eventually it'll come back to our office and we'll issue the permit along okay. and you'll get a copy of the recommendation for then too. Okay. okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck with your project as you move forward. Thank you. Thank you. This is a sign and window replacement. Placement of two new windows, not replacement, placement of two new windows, and then new signage. Our next application. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> for 15 East State Street. Yeah. I think we know who you are, so. You know who I am. <laughs> and you know who we are, so. Yes. Describe what you're doing. Um, well, we're moving our real estate brokerage to where Shippy Eye Care was. And um, I think the only real changes would be um, a couple of front windows for that entry alcove. Um, initially, I was really hopeful to move. It's about 11 feet deep, so it, it doesn't look it in this sketch, but it, it really goes in a lot. Um, and we'd hope to have the doorway straight ahead going in to be more welcoming. And unfortunately, there's a large steel I beam right through the middle of there. <laughs> and I went to great expense to try to find a way to move it, but um, it, it just. <laughs> it, it goes all the way up three floors. It's just, it, it, there's a point at which I had to say I can't do that. So I'm proposing to just put basically there'd be two windows, the same material as the front windows on either side of it as you go in. So at least one would walk into that alcove and see some light and something other than just a clapboard wall. Mm -hmm. um, and the door would stay in its current location, which is to the right. I think that's probably the only physical change. And then the, the signage is um, to take the current sign we have now at 81 Main Street um, and get that freshened up and repainted. Um, they will actually shorten it by, I think, about nine inches so it fits in that block over the doors so it'll fit properly. Um, and then we also have the blade sign proposed because obviously this location doesn't have quite the prominence of our current one. And, uh, now are you moving out of your current location? We are. What's going in there? We need a great retail use for it. We don't have one yet. But we've moved We've moved our property operations into the Blanchard block. Um, we've basically separation of property management and brokerage. Mm -hmm. And we had everything under one roof at, in our current spot. Um, but Where are you going to put your revolving... We're going to have a retirement party for that. <laughs> Poor baby's been around I don't know how many million times since 1971. People are fascinated with that thing. They, they just know. stand there. And, we have a more contemporary version we're going to use at this place, but it'll, it'll Digital. It, it won't be. Well, it's LED lighted um, frames. Really? I think there's something pretty awesome about that. Oh, it is. And we've kept it going. I mean, my dad found that at a realtor's convention in San Francisco in like 1970. <laughs> and the guy who made him went out of it and started selling real estate. <laughs> but we bought parts from him before he did. So we kept it running for decades. You know, yeah. there the old clockmaker on Northfield Street, what's his name, Mr. Barlow? He used to do remember. it for us and kept it running, then he died. <laughs> and it's been just like... <laughs> but if you have a great use for it, it's... Not for that. But so you own that space that you're in now, and, right. that, and mm -hmm. where you're leaving is going to be vacant, and right. some something really cool is going to go in there. You'd really like retail, yeah, yeah, if possible. Yeah, it's been, you know, we've been there since 71, before we were there, Peerless Insurance was there, so it's probably been since the 1950s that, that there's been a retail use in that location, and it's one of the best retail spots in town. So oh, it's an incredible corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you are you moving for less space and more space? Less space, and it was time to update where we are. We did it 15 years ago, and um, 
to up, we could just update where we are, but it, it wouldn't be the right thing. It's not the right configuration. It's just not working that well. You know, the world has changed with the internet. It's our office was like a public library on Saturdays, where people used to come in and go through the MLS books and get the info. Now they do that at home on their computers. Right. Yes, uh, we don't need all the round tables where you can sit around and sort right. through books. Right. So yeah, those are the two. I guess the three changes: the, the two signs and the, the windows. And I think we may also put parking signs in, but there's on, on the side toward Harry Sheridan. There's a few parking spaces. That, mm. Yeah, there's a... None of the signs are lighted. We, there's very wonderful, adequate lighting from the city street lights there. So. How big is your office? Where we are? Where are you moving out of? About 2,100 feet. Yeah, just, yeah, just really curious to see. When are you thinking you'll be out? Um, by the end of the month. The Beard still owns the building? No, I bought the building. Oh, you bought it. Oh, good. Back when I called you on the district heat question. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I was, uh, <laughs> my first experience with district heat. <laughs> you didn't have one of your relief valves blow off today, did you? No. <laughs> and again, the sign, the sign over the doorway mm -hmm. will look like that, basically? It's that sign. It's the same sign we have over the front now. They're just okay. going to paint it freshly. They're going to cut a few inches off each end to make it fit mm -hmm. into that framed space. Is that a wooden sign? I think so. I don't know. Wooden Wood made it for us 12 years ago or so. This is Marky Potter, and he's doing this one too. Right. Yeah. No, he does great work. Yeah. Any comments, questions, suggestions from anyone? Okay. We have to do two separate sets of criteria because of the uh, the sign is separate from the window installation. Okay. So I'll run through the. Uh, this is for the windows and buildings. Preservation reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district or, in, or involves an historic structure acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping not applicable. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change in lighting or so not applicable. Recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of that portion of the application, raise your hand. sign on both at the same time and we'll run through the sign criteria preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district of involves and historic structure acceptable harmony of exterior design acceptable compatibility of proposed exterior materials acceptable compatibility of proposed landscaping not applicable prevention of the use of incompatible designs buildings color schemes or exterior materials acceptable Location and appearance of all utilities, no changes. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. Actually, they're all the same as on the first one, that first portion. Number two, conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations, acceptable. Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties, acceptable shall not obscure significant architectural details, acceptable. Consistency and uniformity of multiple signs, not applicable here. Mm -hmm. Oh, great, because all other signs on the building, outside of theirs. Never mind. In the CB2 and OP districts. Yep. Illumination, internally lit, not or prohibited, that's acceptable. Pennants and banners are prohibited, not applicable. Individual letters affixed, painted, or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged. 
the signs proposed are acceptable in this location. All in favor of the sign application ratio. Sign each of those above my name there and down below there. Okay. Thank you very much. Good. And that's an administrative approval. Yeah. Yep. Great. Good luck. So we'll have a lot of your move. Moving. Yeah. All those a, years of uh, finding a dynamite tenant for your. Yeah, that's the key space. thing. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good luck. Bye, Tim. Thank you. And we have the minutes. From September the third and the sixteenth. From the third, we have to do them probably one at a time because I wasn't here on the sixteenth. Okay. So I'll I'll, in, I'll move the third. We are second for the third. Second. All in favor of the third minutes? Raise your hand. I wasn't. Okay. Yeah. I'm assuming Eric raised his hand. Steve, <laughs> oh, Steve, absent. Eric, and Ben. <laughs> I see that absent. I'll move, I'll move to 16th then. Notably absent. Yeah, that was a big part of the list. These are tough meetings. So, Eric, Anna, and Ben yep, so for Eric the moved. 16th. Eric moved already. Oh, I'll second. All in favor of the 16th? Minutes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.